And welcome to this week's IG Live. I'm very excited because we have a special guest joining us today. She's an author. This is her latest book. Uh, this is the newest graphic novel from Thrang Nguyen. And she is also a wildlife conservationist and environmental activist. And she's known for tackling the illegal wildlife trade in Africa and Asia. And in fact, she was named to 2020's Forbes 30 Under 30 list um, for Asia. And in 2022, she was awarded the Princess of Girona International Award, Award for her inspiring work on conservation. She's the founder and executive director of Wild Act, which is an NGO that monitors the illegal wildlife trade and provides uh, conservation education programs. So we're very excited to have her join us here today. Thank you to her for coming on. It's, it's a very late hour for her, but we're excited to have her with us to talk. And again, this is her. Hello. Just Hello. showing off your, the cover of your new book. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And I was just saying this is a pretty late, late uh, call for you to be taking. So we appreciate you making the time for us. No, thank you. For, uh, for having this event. I'm really excited. Well, let's jump right in. Um, of course, you're known for your activism and your work on wildlife conservation. Where did that passion and um, desire to take care of the environment, where did that come from? I, um, I think it's always, I, I think it's just like any children in the world, the love for nature and the curiosity and the excitement of being outdoor, being in the nature, has been with me since I was a tiny little kid. And conservation, um, it, like it was said in the um, Chang and Soria um, book, I, I, I actually wanted to work in conservation when I accidentally saw there was a bear being, um, having her bite extract um, from the neighbor. And from witnessing that, from seeing what happened, I still remember the noises that she was making, the smell that was happening on that day. The, everything was really vivid. And, and that when I was kind of like making a promise to myself and I said, this is what I want to do. I want to work for conservation. I want to help animals from suffering, suffering like the bears I witnessed. Yeah, and now you've turned that into, um, into a passion for children's books. So, you have this desire to, to help the environment, to help the animals. So why did you choose uh, children's books as a way to do that? Um, I think that's one of the things in conservation is that there's no single bullet toy, and uh, so there's no single silver bullet. And we just have to try to do everything. And I remember as a, as a little kid, I, I, um, I always said my morning, um, money. So my mom she gave me some pocket money for to buy my myself breakfast. Um, but I never used that money to buy breakfast. I always used those money to buy children's picture books. And mm -hmm. just from reading manga and there were lots of other picture books, I learned about I learned a lot about the natural world. I learned a lot a lot about uh, animals around me and the trees, the plant names, and the animal names, uh, and the insect names. And I remember when I was Try to think of a way that what what can I do for conservation? What can I who can I talk to to tell the story of Soria of, of, of Canon? Um, and that when I think, oh yeah, I used when I was a student. I love reading books, and because I love reading books, I love telling my parents about the books that I love. And that when I was kind of like having a light bulb moment, and I said, okay, let's try to write a story, telling the story to children and then let the children tell the story to their parents and making a, an impact to conservation world. And that's when I was like, okay, let's try to find an artist, someone that can work with me and someone that can deliver all of this story in words, turn them into pictures, turn them into things that children can come close to and can relate it to. And that's when I start working with Jisoo and he did an amazing job, didn't he? Yeah, I want to show some of the pictures. So I've already shown this beautiful cover. But what a, the artwork in here is just stunning. I mean, it looks like something you would find in an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And the way that you've done it is so clever because there's the main story, but then you have her field notes. For those who haven't read, read it, it's about a girl who is working 
um, working in wildlife conservation is you have her field notes as she's working with the animals and as she's learning more about them, as well as the actual, the story of how they're saving this animal who's been so abused. And so I love the, I love this idea that when you teach children, you're really teaching their family because we all know how it is. Kids get so excited and they go home and they tell their parents, just like you were saying. And I know that's something that your, um, your organization, your NGO Wild Act also focuses on is education of youth. So you've already touched on this some, but why is it so important to teach young people in order to get them involved in, in conservation? I oh, personally, I think it's super important to get everyone involved. Um, but conservation is something very new in Vietnam and it's still considered as a kind of an alien carrier. A lot of people, uh, when I was small, uh, my parents, we did about 20 years ago, my parents and my teacher, they had no idea what conservation is. And when I told them I want to be conservationist, they told me that conservation is a carrier for uh, rich white people in the West. It's not for Asian people, not for Vietnamese to do. And I remember I was really unsatisfied with the answers. And growing up in Vietnam, and I know there's still so many young Vietnamese, so many people interested in conservation. But they were laughed at, they, they were ridiculed, they were, they were told that their dream is, is not real and try to do something more practical for their life, that become a, a accountants or become a doctors. Um, so I, I was very fortunate that I was able to do my education in the UK and I wanted to bring this, I wanted to bring, bring this kind of this knowledge and whatever I've learned overseas and bring it back and, and give them this opportunity and empower young Vietnamese who want to have, who have these similar dreams, being able to learn, being able to be educated and able to work in conservation because we really need local people. We need people from Vietnam to do conservation rather than the expecting people from America or from England or from Europe to come over and help us to save our nature. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's so wonderful about, about your book is that not only do we have representation of a, of a young Vietnamese woman who is involved with the main character who's involved in the conservation, but there are so many other characters, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, the, um, the ones that work with the elephants, the is a mahouts. Yeah. The the one that there's so in in the conservation program as it's uh, portrayed in the book, you see so much local involvement and actually people who had been involved in abusing the animals, mm -hmm. using the elephants, for example, like in in tourism, in the in the book they actually get involved in the conservation and helping the animals learning new ways to work with the animals to recover. So it's really a very different picture than I think a lot of times people, people see, like you said, it's often seen as something come from the West and, and it's, you know, the white people are, are doing the conservation effort, but this really shows a lot of local environment. What do you hope that people understand about how conservation is, is working in Vietnam today? Yes, that, definitely. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, because there's so much we can learn from the West, and most of my, lect my, my lecturers, my professors, my advisors, um, a lot of my colleagues are foreigners, um, are English or Germans or Americans, and I learn so much from them. But that's the thing, when, when you talk about conservation, you have to empower the local people. They are the ones that need to stand up and need to realize that these problems are there to solve, not waiting for people from outside to come and help and do everything. Um, and it, it actually is not just in Vietnam, it's in so many other countries, the whole of Southeast Asia now, you see a lot, of lo a lot more local people who get empowered, who are interested and who want to solve the problems. Um, and even in Africa as well, uh, so many local people are now standing up and say, yes, this is our problem. We the human are the problem, <coughs> we also human are the solution and, and we need to solve these issues and give nature a chance to bounce back and to survive. Yeah, and could you tell us a little bit, because I know this the story in Saving Hanan is based on a, a true story um, of something that had happened to you. Can you tell us about what is the real story behind the book and then how did you, how did you adapt it to, into a story for children? Um, so with Hanan's story, I came across Hanan's when it's in the la very last few years of her life. Oh, I'm still getting so emotional talking about her. Um, mm -hmm. She 
just like in the book, she was very young when she was kidnapped from the forest. And um, she spent her whole life, literally, for what I think, and the right way to say it, there's no other way to say it, like she literally was living in hell for so many years, for the majority of her life. And when she was rescued, it was amazing Dion, who worked for Animal Asia Foundation at the time, uh, who was there and witnessing what happened for, to her nun from her mahout who was beating her up at the time. And she had a, it was really painful to see um, how, how a healthy elephant in the wild, how they behave, and how an elephant that was so broken by her nun, um, with her, her leg was pretty much gone, her tail was broken, her back was broken. She had no idea what to do with her life. She wanted to lie down, she wanted to rest, but she knew she was allowed to. The moment she knew that, she was eaten. Um, so it was really, really painful. And I, I remember that after she got rescued, and it takes out a long time and a lot of effort from everyone around her, including the other elephants in the um, elephant retirement program to help her to get back to, to be to behave like an elephant and to know that she is no longer being beaten. She can do what she wants now. She can go into the water if she wants. She can eat when she feels hungry. And um, after all of that, and I was thinking like this is, this is such a powerful story. So there are so many people in the world, including people in Vietnam, um, still think riding elephant is fine. People look at elephants out they're so huge, they're so strong. What's the problem with them carrying me on their back? Or they just simply think, oh, I go to this place and I take a selfie with the elephant and that's just fine. But it's really important to them to know that just that one minute of having a picture taken with elephants or 10 minutes riding on the elephant back, it's only 10 minutes for you, but it's a whole life for the poor animal. And um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to get so emotional when I talk about her non. And so I was talking to Dion and say, let's let's try to make her story um out to the world so people can understand what is happening to the Asian elephant. Um and her non actually passed away before the book um was published. So it was really sad. And I remember um I remember when she was gone, and everyone was super, super sad, and um, we have a huge gathering, and um, there's a lot of tears, but there's a lot of um, a lot of recalling the story of how she came to us, and how she changed, and how she behaving, how she was able to have, to have the last two years really happy of her life before, before she was gone, and how she changed all of us as well. Mm. It's amazing to see how an elephant was so terrified of humans to become so trust, trustworthy of us and let let people come to her and be friends with her and helping her to get back to how she's supposed to be and i think that is just so powerful i mean even for humans um if we come through go through something like she like she did we probably lose our faith already we probably give up already but she she did not she was she would be a lovely loving elephant and um and willing to give other people a second chance to 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 be there for her to be with her and i think that is just really beautiful um about her yeah and it's, it's such a powerful i understand why you're getting so emotional about it um just from the book you see the abuse that happens and um and it goes quite into detail about the the injuries that Hanan had, not just physical, but I, but like you were saying, like the emotional injuries that that when they first rescued her, she would go, um, she would be out in the wild and she wouldn't know what to do with herself. She was so terrified of that she would be beaten again. And then you always have, you know, and sometimes she would just kind of stand there. And everybody was watching to see what is she going to do? Is she like, she didn't know, can I eat when I want, like, like you were saying. And then when she finally does and she starts to play with the other elephants and you can see her change, it is, it's so moving to read it. And, and I think overall that goes along with the idea that, that you have a very hopeful message for young people. I think sometimes it can be overwhelming when we read about what is happening in the environment. I just saw an article this morning about, 
um, I can't remember how many it was, uh, species that have just been declared extinct. That um, I think it was 20 something species they've just declared extinct. And it can be so overwhelming to read about this. And yet you have a very hopeful message for young people and that you really feel like humans can be the solution to these environmental problems. Can you tell us more about that? What, what do you hope that young people take away from reading your book? I, um, after working so long in conservation, and I, I think a lot of, I think people who work in um, social issues probably can relate to this as well. There are so many bad news, so many green and so many news, like you just said, announcing this amount of animals go extinct, this amount of animals going to be extinct, and uh, things that you just see around you. And it's so easy to get depressed and get so upsetting and, and, and feel like there's nothing I can do to change anything. And so that's why I want to keep hope. I want to keep people hope, and I want to give myself hope. And, and that's the message I want to send through the book as well. Because without hope, we won't we won't be able to do anything. We won't have any power. We won't have any motivation to do anything. Um, and for children, I think it's extremely important to, to give them that message, to encourage them, um, to have hope, to have the courage, and to be brave, to follow whatever uh, they heard tell them, to follow their dreams. And only then, if they're able to, to do what they really wanted to do with their passion, with their love, um, they will be able to change the world, and that's the one thing I really want to send through in the in the through the books. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how old you are, or whether you are a woman, you are a man, you are a young girl, or you are a boy, um, or gen, or whatever the skin, race, the color, um, the ethnic minority you are. Just as long as something that you really, really wanted to do, some problem that you really, really burning want to solve, you can do it as long as you keep going and keep trying. And there's so much, so much more that you can change and you can improve in the world. That is such an important message. That is so powerful. And it comes through so clearly, I think, in your book. It is such an, it's a very emotional book, but it's also very empowering and has a really uplifting message, I think. Um, are you, do you think that you'll write more? Especially this character, Chang, is, um, is such a wonderful character. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think um, at the moment, at the moment we um, we are really busy with uh, a lot of projects in in Vietnam. Um, we are working on the uh, to protect the migratory birds at the moment. Um, and you from August until uh, February every year, there are thousand millions of migratory birds flying across Vietnam from Europe, go through Vietnam, go down to Australia. But many of them are being uh, poached and killed for the bird meat trade or, um, or for um, hunting recreations. And we really want to train that because it's pushing so many species of birds going to be extinct. So I actually was, draft I was drafting a, um, a story based on the migratory books, um, migratory books, and hopefully we can work uh, toward it to turn it into another uh, the third book. But at the moment, because of the amount of work that we have to do and the amount of survey we need to do, as well as the amount of birds that need to be rescued, um, I, this, this, this third book, I think it's going to be uh, quite a bit of delay. Um, but yeah, I really, I really wanted to continue writing more books, especially if, if the public find it interesting, if the children find it empowering them, if it helps people to understand more about conservation issues, then it definitely gives me in that motivation to go for it 100 percent. Well, well I, I think that you don't need to worry about that. You had such an amazing response to your first book, and there's already a lot of buzz of um, a lot of people excited about your new book that I don't think you need to worry about the public's response to it. And it, and it is such a powerful way to, to bring this helpful message and to get kids excited about getting involved in conservation and, and finding out what they can do where they live. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. I know you are very busy and you're doing such important work that it's really an honor to have you join us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this chance and um, thanks a lot for, uh, for having, my, having the book and for spreading non-story out to the world. Thank you. Well, thank you to everybody who joined us. If you joined us late, this will be up um, 
later today on our YouTube channel and in just a few minutes on Instagram. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody.